will examine the treatment centers and their future. What happens if the support stops? Watch Road to Recovery, tonight on the Channel 5 News 10 o'clock report. You're watching Channel 5. From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. We begin tonight with a debate in Washington today about gun control held against the backdrop of the Texas handgun massacre of yesterday. It was a terrifying day. Mark Matthews, who worked at the cafeteria in Killeen, squeezed inside the restaurant's dishwasher and was so frightened he didn't come out until this morning when the police convinced him the gunman himself was actually dead. In the House of Representatives today, the question was whether to outlaw several types of automatic weapons, the weapons of war, they were called today. The House voted 247 to 177 to do nothing. Here's ABC Sheila Cast. Echoes of the gunfire in Texas punctuated the House debate. The gun used in Colleen was not on the list of 13 semi-automatic weapons the House bill would have banned, but the bill would have outlawed ammunition clips of more than seven rounds. Yet only one congressman told the House yesterday's events had changed his mind, Chet Edwards, who represents Colleen. For me, suddenly the old arguments ring hollow. We hear guns don't kill, people do. Tell that to the victims of those 22 citizens that are dead today. It was not the pistol that caused those deaths. If it wasn't a pistol, it could easily have been a rifle, and if not a rifle, a shotgun. The bill has nothing that would have prevented yesterday's tragedy. Untrue. The killer used 17-round ammunition magazines, shoved one in after the other, which would be banned under this legislation. The debate hinged on who uses these weapons and why. Nobody needs an assault weapon except cowards and criminals and weirdos who have to own an assault weapon in order to feel like a man. We don't need someone that's never fought in combat or even served in the military to tell us what weapons to carry or how to hunt. The liberals want to attack our weapons. Don't let them do it. That view prevailed. Today's action means Congress is not likely to pass a ban on assault weapons this year, but will agree on a waiting period to buy handguns. Sheila Cast, ABC News on Capitol Hill. Now we go back to Texas. Colleen is not a very large city, about 45,000 people, small enough certainly that everyone knows Luby's Cafeteria. The founder of the restaurant chain says this branch should be closed for good, just too painful a memory. And the company has contributed $100,000 to a fund intended to help the families and those particularly who had been victimized. ABC's Tom Foreman is in Colleen tonight. Flags are flying at half staff all over Colleen. The shock that came in the first few hours after the cafeteria massacre today was replaced by anger. A lot of it could be heard over a local radio station. Didn't anyone try to stop this mentally deranged person? Didn't they try to fight for their right to live? This should open a lot of people's eyes that there are a lot of lunatics wherever you go. You just don't know when it's in your backyard. Along with the anger came questions. Barbara Knight was wondering today how she escaped with only a bullet wound to the ankle. I don't know why my life was spared and so many were killed, because everybody I know was just praying fervently. Along with the questions came fear. Gilda Arusa lived just behind the restaurant and could not sleep last night. I'm just scared. I don't feel safe anymore. For some, the shooting was very personal. Sam Wink was sitting across the table from Pat Carney when she was gunned down. Today, he kept thinking that maybe there was something he could have done to save her. Could I have done something to, to distract him, maybe even give my own life, people could live, but, but I knew that I, knew was, I couldn't. You know, he would shoot me and he'd go back to his business. Some of those people are our friends and our loved ones. School children were told by their principal to help each other forget the sorrow. That will be difficult for everyone in this community. Tom Foreman, ABC News, Killeen, Texas. What is it that drives a man to do such a killing? We'll have that story in just a moment. Once again, Buick is raising the banner for quality in America. Introducing the 1992 LeSabre with a higher level of power, safety, security, and convenience. 
this new Sabre is going to be one tough act to follow. Le Sabre for 1992 from Buick. Did you know that the most valuable patent ever issued went to a small business owner, Alexander Graham Bell? Since then, AT&T has stayed on the cutting edge of communications. For example, AT&T just invented a new 800 service for small businesses. It uses your existing line and costs only $6 a month. At AT&T, almost half our business comes from small business. When you succeed, we succeed. Call about our 800 offer. We're having some difficulty getting another report on this killing in from Colleen in Texas. As soon as we get it, we'll, uh, we'll have it, but let's move on for a second because the U.S. Navy today has publicly apologized after bungling the investigation of the explosion on board the battleship USS Iowa. It happened during a training exercise two years ago. 47 sailors were killed. The Navy had mistakenly blamed it all on one sailor. Here's ABC's Dennis Trout. Navy officers took the letters of regret to the families of all the men killed in the Iowa explosion, saying it now appears that the Navy may have been at fault, not a single sailor. We're sorry that, that, we, that Clayton Harvey was accused of this incident when we didn't have clear and convincing evidence. I think, I think we've got a victory here, guys, and I'm, I'm really, really happy about it. No one was more pleased with the apology than the Hartwig family. The Navy claimed initially that Hartwick had planted a bomb in the gun turret, implying that he was angry over a homosexual love affair. There has been no apology to Hartwig's friend Ken Truitt, who says false rumors about homosexuality nearly destroyed him. They had no right. I was never charged with anything. Yet my life, my career, my marriage was ruined. Truitt, who has left the military and is divorced, is suing the Navy for $10 million. The Hartwigs are suing for $40 million, and the families of 37 other victims are suing for $2 million each. But lawsuits against the military are almost never successful. As for the Iowa, it is retired after seeing action in four wars, and Navy officials believe the accident in gun turret number two will never be adequately explained. Dennis Trout, ABC News, the Pentagon. The Bush administration may be on the verge of winning another fight over a controversial nominee, not as explosive as the Thomas appointment, but very bitter. Five months after Mr. Bush nominated Robert Gates to lead the CIA, the Senate Intelligence Committee is finally prepared to vote tomorrow. ABC's John Martin reports that Mr. Gates today won some crucial support. The Intelligence Committee chairman, Democrat David Boren of Oklahoma, said he will vote for the nominee. I believe Robert Gates on balance is well equipped and well qualified to be the next director of central intelligence. With seven Republican votes almost certain, Boren's support would give Gates enough votes to recommend his confirmation to the full Senate. The White House would like help from three Democrats who say they haven't decided, Glenn of Ohio, Nunn of Georgia, and DeConcini of Arizona. DeConcini said today he was still concerned that Gates failed to forecast the Soviet collapse either from blindness or perhaps politics. He is the expert, but he gave the kind of answers that uh, he was expected to give from the White House. And I think that's the lingering problem that some of us have with Mr. Gates. What the Republicans are counting on is that the senators will confirm Gates because they are battered and bruised by the fight over Clarence Thomas and will not want to engage in what one White House representative calls back-to-back -back bloodletting. John Martin, ABC News, Washington. There is a new government report on inflation today. Consumer prices rose four-tenths of a percent in September. That is the biggest increase in seven months. And because consumer prices have now risen for the last three months, the government announced today that older Americans will get some relief. Next year's Social Security benefits, which are tied to the rate of inflation, will go up 3.7% in January, an average of about $22 more per month. Another measure of the economy, the trade deficit, which most economists had expected to go down last month, actually went up nearly a billion dollars to 6.8 billion. On Wall Street, the Dow Jones Industrials lost more than eight points today to close at 30.53, and the trading was heavy. We have a report tonight about the right to privacy, not your phone records or your financial statements, but information about your genetic makeup, surely the most sensitive information there is about you. Today in Congress, a bill was introduced that would start putting some controls on who can get a hold of such information and forbidding the government from disclosing it without permission. Here's ABC's Bettina Gregory. 
Genetic research has already identified genes which indicate people who are likely to develop cancer, cystic fibrosis, Alzheimer's disease, and alcoholism. Unborn babies can be tested for 200 genetic defects. The fear in the minds of many people is that genetic information will be used to identify those with weak, inferior genes uh, who will then be tre treated as a biological underclass. Health insurance companies are already using genetic information to refuse coverage to people with genetic risks of cancer and other diseases. Many more individuals, as they are shown to have uh, predisposing genes, may find themselves among the ranks of those people on the insurance company's list as uninsurable. Some people avoid genetic tests. Others pay for tests themselves instead of filing claims which would alert insurance carriers. There is also concern about research to determine children's intelligence based on their genes. I shudder at the prospect of tracking based on uh, so-called uh, uh, genetic markers for superior traits. If the information, including genetic information, genetic testing information, is available, it will be used. And that is why scientists are already predicting the privacy of genetic information will emerge as the civil rights issue of the 90s. Bettina Gregory, ABC News, Washington. We have finally made a successful connection with Colleen in Texas, and so we go back there now to visit a community which is struggling with an elementary question. Who was this man who killed whatever his weapons, and why did he do it? Here's ABC's Charles Murphy. George Hennard's pickup, which he kept immaculately clean, was removed from the cafeteria early today. Colleen police have only this sketchy photograph of him. As to motive, they haven't a clue. He left behind nothing that we have found that would indicate this incident would occur. But there were disturbing signs. Hennard lived alone in this house his parents had shared before their bitter divorce, after which they moved away. It was up for sale. Neighbors said he was strange. There was something strange about this house. When real estate agents tried to show it to people, there was a part of it he would not let them see. They asked about one particular closet at the top of the stairs, and he said, oh, that's just a closet like any other closet, and said, I don't want you to open that door. He seems to have been interested in two young women who lived nearby. He followed them, and last June wrote a rambling letter in which he said they were nice, but other women here were vipers. Apparently, he just did not like women at all. Were you scared of him? Well, I was scared to death. I mean, we, we, all, we, we all were. Their mother reported him to police. So did Judy Beach after he screamed at and cursed her and her son. I told him that I thought he was capable of killing someone, that I'm not even sure if I had stopped my car that he wouldn't jump on me and kill me and my son. He had so much hate in his eyes. But she did not file charges, so police did not arrest him. They did not know he owned two pistols but both were legally purchased in Nevada. Everyone here is shocked, but no one who knew him is surprised. Charles Murphy, ABC News, Colleen, Texas. Overseas today, the Palestinians have chosen their representatives to the Middle East Peace Conference. We'll have that story when we come back. High fiber cereal, no taste. Great tasting cereal, no fiber. Why have one without the other? Delicious raisins, nuts, dates, crunchy oat clusters, and crispy high fiber bran flakes. It's like no other fruit and fiber. Great taste. And high fiber. Why have one without the other? Post fruit and fiber cereal. Great taste and high fiber. help fight the corrosive effects of salt and water. Every Lexus features airbag terminals plated in gold. Of course, we might have used a less expensive material, but it wasn't money. We were interested in saving. I saw my doctor because the pain was so bad. I was afraid I needed surgery for my hemorrhoids. I was itching. The burning was awful. But my doctor said my hemorrhoids weren't serious. I didn't need surgery. He told me it was time I started using Preparation H. Preparation H helps shrink swelling of inflamed hemorrhoidal tissues and often brings relief from pain, itching, and burning for hours. What a difference Preparation H makes. Doctor recommended Preparation H. 
In the Middle East, the final elements of an Arab-Israeli peace conference seem to be falling into place. Secretary of State Baker met with Israeli Prime Minister Shamir for six hours today. Mr. Baker said they made good progress. There was progress, too, on who will represent the Palestinians at such a conference. Their names have begun to surface. And as ABC's Dean Reynolds reports, the delegation the Palestinians will present to the world is a forceful one. The Palestinians will be represented at the Mideast Peace Conference by a group of experts on life under Israeli occupation. The Israelis know them well. We helped these people to become leaders because we did put them in our jails, and that gave them legitimacy of leadership. People like Radwan Abu Ayash, born in a refugee camp, one of three on the list imprisoned by the Israelis because of their connection to the uprising. Fellow prisoner Ghassan Khatib, an economics professor whose university has been closed for four years, also because of uprising activity. One doctor, two lawyers, two teachers, a journalist, and Elias Frej, longtime mayor of Bethlehem with close ties to Jordan and old line Palestinian families. The list includes only people from the West Bank and Gaza, a concession to Israel which rejected anyone from Jerusalem or outside the occupied territories. It is a moderate group of PLO supporters who were rubber stamped today by the PLO because it had no other choice. Weakened by its stand in the Gulf War, the PLO has to listen now to men and women who have lived through the uprising and are emerging as new leaders. Two Palestinians from Jerusalem who have been meeting with Secretary Baker are not on the list, but Faisal Husseini and Hanan Ashrawi are expected to act as advisors once the conference convenes. While still unofficial, the Palestinian delegates seem to be past a most important hurdle. Israeli government sources said tonight they see no problem with this delegation. Dean Reynolds, ABC News, Jerusalem. There's another indication today just how serious the Western alliance has become about reducing its reliance on nuclear weapons. The NATO defense ministers have announced an immediate 80% cut in NATO's arsenal of nuclear artillery shells, bombs, and short-range missiles. It is the biggest nuclear arms cut in the alliance's history, and it comes on top of the previously announced cutbacks in American nuclear weapons. There was a train wreck in France this morning. At least 16 people were killed when an overnight passenger train coming from Nice in southern France, crashed head-on into a freight train outside Paris. Officials say the motorman of the freight train, who was among those killed, apparently ran a red signal. And just one other note from overseas. In the Philippines today, the Senate has begun investigating charges raised on this broadcast last night that the foreign secretary of the Philippines, Raul Manglapus, plotted to assassinate an army officer who tried to overthrow President Aquino. Secretary Manglapas called a news conference in Manila today to say the charge is categorically false. When we come back, the American agenda, how to get teenagers off cigarettes. In the midday sun, a gentle breeze, the embrace of white eyes, remember these, the touch, the feel, the fabric of our The feel of cotton, the fabric of our life. In the midst of the storm, it's only natural to wonder where the future will lead. To people who worry about the winds of change today, we'd like to remind you that no adversity lasts forever. And we'll be there with the strength and resources you can count on. Because at Merrill Lynch, we're bullish on the future. In high school, Sharon Simpson used to call me Pinhead. So at the 10-year class reunion, I drive up in my new Eagle Talon TSI all-wheel drive. And what did she say? Nice car, Pinhead. My big brother says his equal talent has 195 horses under the hood. Oh, uh, so you're looking for the horses? No, I'm checking out the intercooled turbocharger. If your doctor has recommended Metamucil and you like the results, but you don't like those glasses of thick liquid, change to FiberCon. Get the same fiber action in easy-to-swallow tablets. Get doctor-recommended FiberCon.
You know, there's nothing square about prunes. These sunsweet pitted prunes are not only irresistibly sweet and bursting with flavor, they're also perfectly round. Only one prune tastes sunsweet. We have put teenagers who smoke on the American agenda tonight, and we do so because, A, 350,000 Americans will die this year of diseases related to smoking, more than all the deaths caused by alcohol and other drugs combined, and B, nine of every 10 adults who smoke picked up the habit as teenagers, and C, the government has just produced the first national household survey of teenage smoking in 10 years. And it shows that teenagers are not getting the message. Our agenda correspondent is Beth Nissen. Would you like smoking or not smoking? No. Across America, the message is clear. More and more smokers are putting out their cigarettes for good. <laughs> but despite the anti-smoking climate, steady streams of new smokers, very young smokers, are lighting up. I was nine years old and I started on Pall Mall and filters. I'd say I probably smoke a cigarette every 20 minutes. Smoke about a pack and a half, two packs a day. We think we are mounting an effective campaign against adult smoking, but we appear not to be doing so against teenage smoking. Teenagers in America continue to smoke and, and do so at alarming levels. In a major government survey of 10,000 teenagers, 18% of all boys and 17% of girls said they had smoked in the past week, levels nearly as high as 10 years ago. Public health officials say the primary reason teenagers smoke is the availability of cigarettes. Children of any age down to 11 years old can walk into about 75% of all the stores in the United States and buy tobacco, even though it's against the law in 46 states. Yet of all forms of drug enforcement, cutting sales of cigarettes to those under 18 can be one of the cheapest and most effective. It need not involve the police, the courts, or paid experts. In Lemonster, Massachusetts, a 16-year-old volunteer goes undercover for the health department. She is able to buy a pack of camels. Behind her is Dr. Joe DeFranza, also a volunteer. He reminds the store manager of the law. If it's not obvious that they're over 25 years old, mm -hmm. you have to ask for their ID, just like you with alcohol. Sure. Those who sell to minors repeatedly are fined by the health department. But once educated, most area vendors cooperate. This clerk refused to sell to the underage buyer. We're trained that way. If they don't look 25, then we don't sell them cigarettes. I see you have your signs up here. Since the enforcement program started less than a year ago, the health department says the number of area teens who smoke has dropped 38%. I have ashtrays in my room. <laughs> Even when authorities can keep teens from getting cigarettes, the real challenge is to keep teens from wanting them. For many teens, smoking is pack behavior. Everybody who I know smokes. I mean, it's the cool thing to do. For many, smoking is a legacy. I grew up around smoke. My sister smoked, my mother smoked, all my friends smoked. And for many, smoking is part of their all-important image. It makes you lose weight. <laughs> it, it does. We as a society are still giving a whole set of messages to young people that smoking is good for your future. That we need to replace those messages with a set that say smoking is bad for your health and you need to never take up smoking. The fine print of the Surgeon General's warnings is lost on the young. We all have to die sometime and it really don't matter if there's a few years taken off of it, of your life. What's happening in this advertisement? Billion dollar cigarette ad campaigns make an addictive substance seem pleasurable, acceptable. They show you someone smoking and look happy. Yet even first graders can be taught to look at ads critically. Many health classes are trying to counter smooth cigarette campaigns with harsh reality. It's not good? No. The goal is to so condition these children now that they will not try cigarettes as teenagers, will not smoke as adults, that they learn early on an elementary lesson of survival. Smoking is not good for me. Beth Nissen, ABC News, New York. Today's American Agenda. We'll have more news in a moment. Did you know that the most valuable patent ever issued went to a small business owner, Alexander Graham Bell? Since then, AT&T has stayed on the cutting edge of communications. 
For example, AT&T just invented a new 800 service for small businesses. It uses your existing line and costs only $6 a month. At AT&T, almost half our business comes from small business. When you succeed, we succeed. Call about our 800 offer. by an annual fee, carry the card that doesn't charge one, and keep yourself out of the hole. It pays to discover. You've just poured yourself a bowl of Kellogg's Crispix when... Hello? Mom, what a surprise. Well, actually, my cereal's sitting in milk. When will you get back to your Kellogg's Crispix? It's anybody's guess. Uh-huh. But they wouldn't give your money back? Fortunately, Kellogg's Crispix stays crisp and delicious well, in milk. I'm sure Aunt Helen didn't mean it that way. Even if you can't get to it right away. Uh-huh. Mm, still crispy. You're absolutely right, Mom. Kellogg's Crispix, the taste that waits for you. Take a three, four, or seven-day fun ship vacation to the Bahamas, Caribbean, or Mexican Riviera on Carnival, the most popular cruise line in the world. Danger in a coffee pot from a deadly defect the appliance maker knew about. Hundreds of thousands are still out there, maybe in your home. Watch primetime tonight. The singer, Tennessee Ernie Ford, has died. About a year ago, he explained why he thought audiences always liked him so. When it came time for my show, he said they felt like they didn't have to change clothes or put sterling on the table. They felt comfortable with me. Indeed, we did. Tennessee Ernie! He was the old pea picker who turned down-home music and humor into a national sensation. The Tennessee Ernie Ford Show premiered in 1955 on daytime television. City woman, where are you at, you little heifer? The viewers quickly took to Ford's easy-going wit in his homespun style. The Ford Show debuted in prime time in 1956. National television audiences kept it in the top ten for a decade. You load the 16 ton. What do you get? Another day older and deeper in depth. Ah, yes, for those of us who remember, Ford recorded 16 tons in 1955 in the heyday of rock and roll and Elvis. A song about gritty coal miners sold 400,000 copies in just over a week and 20 million since then. When I was a little bitty baby, mama would rock me in the cradle. Tennessee Ernie Ford was born in Bristol, Tennessee. He went from the church choir to spinning country tunes on local radio for $10 a week to big-time radio stations across the country. Ford sensed very early on that the general public might appreciate his brand of entertainment. Somewhere, somehow, he said, whatever a country singer is singing about happened to someone. One of these days you may hear the set rattle, and when you do, before you tear it apart, turn it on, there may be a guy standing there saying, bless your little pea-picking heart. Tennessee Ernie Ford died of liver disease. He was 72. And that's our report on World News tonight. I'm Peter Jennings. Good night. This has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. Thursday, mass murder and drugs have the feds infiltrating a ruthless gang. Don't mess with me! FBI, the untold stories, and... That's too good. American detective goes undercover. Sheriff! And they're not playing games. You ever play tag when you're a kid? Well, you're in. American Detective Thursday. Wait! Deep, 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 deep. New Kellogg's Double Dip Crunch is dipped in two tasty flavors. It's once in honey and then in nuts. The best of both worlds. New Kellogg's Double Dip Crunch. It's two delicious dips, one great taste, and part of a complete breakfast. Sports bottle. Can cooler. Sports bottle. It's both. And it's free from Kellogg's Double Dip Crunch when you send in the coupon on the back. At Burlington, you can save on everything for work, everything for workouts, and everything for weekends, too. Everything a man wants to wear is at Burlington for less. Tonight, when a comic hides from the mob... You use Mike deodorant? The joke's on Gabe. Time to go to bed. And all new pros and cons. Then, mass murder and drugs.